Hey, what's up? Okay, today I'm going to show you a little device that I created to help me salvage aluminum and copper uh, magnet wire. Uh, I get a lot of my magnet wire from motors and also back of uh, uh, CRT uh, TVs and uh, monitors. So, I'm going to show you what I got. Um, I plan on making some Starship coils like this one. This is actually a twisted pair starship coil it turned out really nice and uh, this is the kind of stuff I'll be making with my magnet wire and rodent coils and everything else so in the back of a TV you have something that looks like this it's hard to see but it is a coil of wire wrapped in tape you see it's got a plug on the end of it get this unwrapped and inside there you'll find what looks like this okay uh, it's a pretty big mess and it's very difficult to uh, to unwind sometimes and salvage but it's worth the time for me also you can find coils like this uh, there's actually quite a bit more magnet wire on here than you'd think that was on the back of it too um, it's part of the decause function as far as I know uh, the other place would be motors uh, you guys seen this before um, you can see how bad and kinked up this stuff is and also this stuff uh, can get pretty bad so when you're done winding it uh, you know you get done winding it and it looks pretty bad so I've created a device to help me out with that I'll show you what that is uh, after I got done disassembling one here this is one coil um, I don't know how much wire is on here this uh, or these coils here usually have uh, it's a 15 inch monitor I took these out of and they uh, were let's see 261 foot approximately on here a little bit more than that some some have more some have less okay so once you get this far okay and you get all this untwisted put it on a spool as this what you can see here okay now if you look real close you can see all the little bitty kinks and knots and and such in, in this wire uh, the, the wire I got off the motor, you can see how crappy it is. It's got like old um, coating on it and stuff from whenever they uh, dipped the motor to seal it. Okay, so now I've created this device right here. And this is going to smoothen out and get rid of all the crud that's on most of this wire. Some of it anyway. So I'll take my spool and just set the camera down pretty close let me see if you can see this take my spool here I get this set up so I can just stick my spool on here I gotta got flip on the other way flip it over so it runs in the machine a little nicer okay so I got the wire in there now what I'm going to do is take this and I'm going to run it through this hole, I'm going to run it around these pulleys, and then I'm going to run it through this jig here that's uh, what it is is a couple of uh, uh, polished hardened um, shank bolts uh, I believe, can't think of the proper name right now, but I'll run it through there. I'll just go ahead and do it. Done this one handed, it's gonna be fun. Alright, so I come in around this way, around this way, and then I'm gonna go. Let's see. I'm just gonna only go through two of these loops because this is some pretty thin wire. Basically, what this does is it creates really tight tension on the wire and it, it basically straightens it out really nice. Okay, now I've got this set up so I can do different things with it. Here I'm going to just go through this like so. Back around. Through here. I'm just going through these pulleys to kind of straighten this stuff out. Now these are actually just bearings. The reason I use bearings on the end here and the beginning it's because they have a really nice rounded polished edge on them so that I don't have to worry about the wire getting snagged. They're just old bearings out of some junk. 
Um, you can see how nice the, the wire would come in here. So if the wire gets all kind of messed up, it, it doesn't want to uh, flow through certain objects well, but these work pretty well. It's got spin on it too if it ever gets in a bind or whatever. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and try putting this up here. See what that does. So I'm going to just check the tension by pulling on it. Actually feels really good. Now I'm just going to pull on this real lightly. I'm going to let you see how straight the wire is. Okay, I've got a long piece pulled out here. Uh, it's not going to focus well, but it's alright. It's going to, uh, you can see it's, it's, it's straight now. This is hard to see, but the wire is now straight. Where the end here, you can see how bent up it is. And then, check it out. Nice, straight, clean wire. As far as this kind of wire goes, um, if you bend this stuff real tight, the insulation wants to break off. Not the coating, but the stuff that was on this motor. And I don't want that on there. I want it to be clean looking like this. So it kind of goes through here and it gets, it knocks that stuff off because it bends the wire so tight. And then it kind of goes through these pulleys and, and knocks all this off. I do have a couple of counters as such. Or I've got some old ones out of like uh, old tape recorders. Counts how many, um, like where it is on the tape. And I do planning plan on hooking that up somehow to this. Uh, I've also got some gear reduction motors over here. Let's see if I can find one. Like this. Ah. This is just a gearhead reduction motor. Uh, I can put a spool on here and hook this motor up to some sort of a uh, um, variable drive or um, just a big potentiometer. Uh, a rheostat, that's what it's called. And then I can put a spool on this side and wrap it up um, nicely. And I can put a foot pedal down here. I can wrap this real nice on that spool. That's another day. Today I just wanted to show you what I got because I may never get to these other small nitpick things. Right now I just got my drill. And I'm going to put a drill uh, or spool on an, a, a shaft and put it in my drill. So I'll do that real quick. Now here's what it looks like right now. If you look close, you can see there's little kinks, little knots, and things in that wire, and this will clean that up. The only reason I'm really doing this is because when I wind the coil and stuff, I want it to look good and clean. Um, and even when you wind the coil, you bend the wire back up. But that's okay. Some of my wire looks pretty bad and rough, so salvaging is always fun. Alright, here we go. Okay, guys, got a spool. Here's what I got for my... Uh, jig for this it works all right I might need some more nuts but I took square nuts and uh, on both ends here slide it on through so the nuts get the center what it does is it just centers on this spool that way maybe gotta loosen it up a little more okay put this nut on this side I gotta have a better way of doing this, but this is all I got for now. Works alright. Okay. So there's my spool. Put it in my drill. I don't have much room right where I'm at, but you should be able to see this. on the end of this see what happens kind of backwards here time out let me turn this ah much better okay here we go so I got this I'm gonna put this on speed too I'm just gonna get it started here and then we'll see what happens
Okay, I'm gonna stop it here for a second and show you the difference between the wire. Alright, that's what it looks like. Kinda rough. And here's what it looks like when it's all cleaned up. See how slick it is? There's some funny looking knots in there, that's because it overlapped. That's alright. But you can see how slick the wire looks and how flat it is and how square it is. So, that's the whole principle behind this little machine. And it does what I want. That's awesome. Of course it does. I designed it. I transfer wire back and forth on spools a lot just because I don't have enough spools. I got some homemade spools out of CDs. There you go. Alright. Tie this off. I'll let you get another look. Now uh, it does look like it has some like knots and stuff, it's just where it overlapped. But if you look where it, it spooled up, you can see how clean it is. So there you go. It's just a bearing, a couple of roller round bearings, a couple of uh, shank bolts. Different configurations I can do. And uh, hopefully I can get a counter or something hooked up to it and it'll actually give me my feet. So if I don't know how long of a piece of wire that I got, Slap it in this machine, pull it on through on a new spool, clean it up at the same time, and voila, 500 foot, whatever. So there you go. Hope you all enjoyed that. I'll show you my little stash of uh, magnet wire I've been collecting. This is a new type of coil. It's called a ball coil. This piece didn't turn out so well. You always have some that you can't get off the roll. This was one of them. All sorts of good stuff. Got a bunch of these type. Some little transformers. Here's my stock of auto monitors. Just a few of them. There's probably uh, 3,000 feet of wire there if I were to... Uh, that's probably more than that if I were to wrap it all out. This also came out of TV. Now, the thing you're going to run into, or at least I have, is some of the wire is aluminum and some's not. You just have to play with it. This coil on this device was wrapped with um, TV cable. There's actually seven cables on here. It's my Bendini motor. It's playing around with. Alright, that's it. This is Russ. I'm out. Uh, I'm gonna wind some starship coils like this. All right, watch my other video. Starship coil winding time.